I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Close communion from your pastor's perspective. Let's have a little fun with that. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Share, sharing is caring when it's Higher Things content. And donate your tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us passing on that faith to the next generation. And they need that gospel in these dark times. So it's Friday, and so I want to do something a little different. We have done multiple videos on, on closed communion, which we'll put in the description. There's at least three of them. So I want to give you a perspective that you've probably never considered. This is what's going on in your pastor's mind when you come up to him, bouncy, happy, this is my friend, this is my girlfriend, this is my boyfriend, this is my cousin, sister's brother, and then you want him to commune. Now, this usually occurs about two minutes before service. So your pastor's walking in, and he's got his hands full, and he's thinking to himself, if he's pious, if he's a good pastor, like your pastor, he's thinking to yourself, you know, he's praying or he's singing hymns in his brain. He's thanking God. If it's me, I'm walking into to church going, do, 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 um, Isn't it a happy day? And then all of a sudden you walk up to him and you're like, hey, pastor, I was wondering if my my good friend, my cousin's sister's brother, my, my visitor can commute. And all of a sudden your pastor goes from singing a hymn to thinking, Because it's life or death. You don't think it's life or death, but to your pastor, it's life or death. You see, because it's your pastor's job to, sh to shepherd those, that's what pastor means, who attend the Lord's table. And, um, and here we're not talking about separating the sheep from the goats. Here we're talking about to distribute the Lord's gifts. And those gifts, what um, while they give life, if they're if they're given in an uh, if they're received in an unworthy manner, can kill. You know, I mean, this is like forged with fire; it will kill. That is why many of you who are weak and ill, and some have died. So let it let this is 1 Corinthians 11, 28 and 29. And so when you um when you walk up and you skip up, time slows down for your pastor. And he is brought to the reality of the situation that you've given him two minutes to deal with. And so what he does is he asks a simple question. Are you a member of the LCMS? The reason why he does that is not because he wants to know whether you know the secret handshake or have the secret LCMS decoder ring, okay? That's not what's going on. He's trying to figure out what your friend believes in the fastest way possible. Do you believe the same as we believe? Now, if your friend says, oh yeah, I'm going to confirm member of the, of, of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, that means Everything is, now his next question is then, are you in a good standing with your congregation? Are you undisciplined or anything like that? But really your pastor's taken a sigh of relief because now he knows that for all that he can do, your friend is going to receive the sacrament in a worthy manner. Now the problem occurs if the person says, oh no, I either was once a Baptist 80 years ago, uh, uh, but now I've decided to come back to church or your person says, I was confirmed to Lutheran, but then I didn't care about the faith. And then I, I, I went to the, this church and that church and the other church. And now your pastor's sitting there like this. And again, tick, 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 tick. Because the opening hymn's playing and he's thinking to himself, if I don't get into this church right now, the elders are going to have a meeting later on about how I can never start church on time. And so he says, and he's thinking, Am I going to commune this person to their own suffering and death? Now, if you're thinking to yourself, this is between me and God, and you have nothing to do with my relationship between me and God, again, 
1 Corinthians 11. This can kill you, as the great martial artist says on Forge with Fire. It will cut. And this is not only between you and God, it's about what you believe sideways. And your pastor wants to sleep at night and doesn't want to participate in your death. And so he says, okay, well, what do you believe? What do you want? Now, if the person says, I want the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of my sins, your pastor's like, well, this is an interesting problem because you want what the Lord has for you and um, yet you go someplace else. Hmm. And what he does next is between him and God. Okay? But if you say something, if your friend says something like, I just want to be with Jesus and I want to commune with Jesus and all this. I love Jesus, which is all great. We're pro that. That's good for business. The problem is the, the scriptures are filled with people who have great intentions who do bad things. There was a guy in the Old Testament while the ark was on a cart and you're not supposed to touch the ark. Whoever touches the ark, the presence of God kills them, who, who when the ark was about to fall, caught it and died. Now, you may not remember that story, but your pastor does. And so he's sitting there like this. Well, let's do this. Let's, let's as the opening hymn starts to play, let's talk about this some other time. And you, and be honest with yourself, you think to yourself, as your little world is blown, as your pastors upset you, he's a mean, mean pastor, and how terrible he was because he didn't commune you. But again, he's trying to look out for the health and well-being of you and your friend. Now, Another situation occurs, Stu's. Another situation occurs where you don't say anything and you just bring them up to the Lord's table. And your pastor is working the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you. And he comes to your friend and he looks at you and he looks at your friend. And again, he has the same moment. And now he has less time to figure out what he's going to do. Now, he can, he can do two things here. He can lean over and he can embarrass everyone. Do you have the secret symbol of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod? Do you know the handshake? Which is going to embarrass you or embarrass them. Or he communes the person and thinks to himself, please be Lutheran. Please believe that this is the body and blood of Jesus. Which, by the way, if you're if you want to comment in the in the comments that other people are saved too, other than the Lutherans, that's not what I'm saying. When I say please be Lutheran, I'm please believe that this is the body and blood of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Please don't believe this is a symbol. Please don't believe that this is like just bread and wine. Please don't spend, you know. So like, I'm not saying that only Lutherans are saved. They're not. What I'm saying is, please believe. That salvation is by grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ, and that what I'm about to give you is the body and blood of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Because again, what you're not, what, what, what we're missing here, and why your pastor becomes the bad guy, is because we're not thinking that this thing can kill us. It will kill. It can give life, but it can also give death. He chose. Holy. So, what? 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 There, the alternative to all of this, all right, is is to take the time to have a discussion with your friend and with your pastor. Take the time to talk about this. We believe that this is the body and blood of Jesus, whether you believe it or not. Your faith does not make it the body of Christ. Your faith does not make it what it is. It is the body and blood of Christ because of the word. And that means something. And so we need to slow down, you crazy child. Little Billy Joel there, because we're keeping it light. Um, we need to slow down 
talk about these things and understand these things. And if you talk to your friend in advance and your friend says to you, I just want to feel close to Jesus, then you say, look, I'm, I'm going to sing hymns with you. We're, we're not going to do this because we can, we can do this another time. Or you both can come in and talk to your pastor about communion and all the, the gifts of communion and all of that is. One quick story, and then I'll let you go. And I know my son, George, when he's editing this video, he's going to get mad at me for going too long, but tough toodles. Um, you've been with me this long. Can you finish? The is the story of an Easter. As a young pastor, it was Easter Sunday, and I went up to, the, uh, to a person who was visiting, and they wanted, they called me over, and they were from a different church body. And they were from a, a, a Lutheran church, not our own. And they wanted to commune. And I said, well, we have a lot of differences. This is five minutes before service, but we have a lot of differences. And I'd like to sort of sit down and talk to you about those before we just sort of act like we're together when we're together, because communion isn't just between you and Jesus, it's between you and those around you. And the person looked at me and said, all of these people, like half of them, they haven't come to church in a year. They're Christmas and Easter folks. I go to church every Sunday. I should be at the Lord's Supper. But they, they should not, you're not stopping them, but you're stopping me. And I looked at the person and I was like, that's a good point. And a very good reason why you shouldn't be communing because you hate your neighbor. And they, I, I think I thought that I may, I was young. I was not that young, but I think I said, that's a good reason. But this is only showing me that you shouldn't commune. We shouldn't commune together because we have these big differences. And the person stormed out of church. It ruined my day, ruined my night. It ruined my, my week, it ruined my Easter. And it ruined theirs too. And it all could have been avoided by, by a little bit more time to have a discussion about what we believe and why we believe what we believe and how important we believe what we believe is. And if you track through that and you've made it through 12 minutes of this video, then you are more power to you. The point is, this is the body and blood of Jesus for the remission of sins. This isn't that we believe that we're the only people that are saved. It's that we believe that this, while giving life, can also give death and that a person needs to examine themselves before going to the supper. And the pastor is there also to help them examine themselves because sometimes we're not able to examine ourselves in a right manner. And we could talk about that another time. But your pastor isn't the bad guy. Your pastor's trying to do his job. He's trying to be a pastor, a shepherd. And you might want to help him along the way by giving him a little bit more time, giving him a little understanding, and understanding what we believe concerning the Lord's Supper, because that is what shades our practice. And if you disagree with me as our communion practice, you want to talk about this, make comments in the description. I'll be happy to discuss them with you. But I thought I would give you a different perspective on this fun Friday, on what goes on in your pastor's mind when you bring your friend up at the last minute to talk about the sacrament. I'm Pastor George Borgart. Have a blessed weekend. And this has been another Higher Things video short.